What's going on guys and gals, it's me JT and welcome to my new series, the X-Axis Podcast. This podcast is going to be something a little bit new, you know, I know everybody in the world is saying why is another guy on the planet doing another podcast, but I sort of wanted to do this podcast just because I want answers, alright? I like the idea of grouping up with people, talking to different types of individuals, inviting a lot of people on, and I I want to focus on building a community, and the best way to do it is by getting to know the community, by knowing some of my friends, bringing them on, talking with them, having a great conversation, whether it's about video games or not, I feel like this is a step in a direction that's going to lead to a lot of great productivity, and just, it's going to allow me to express a lot of the creative freedom that I have, you know, whenever I record or hop online and I try to make a video, I really do put on a tuxedo at times and I I try to push through it and it feels a little weird at times, you know, so I feel like podcasting is going to be a new realm of opening for me. It's going to, it's going to allow me to express myself, my true opinions, you know, and really develop a uh, a flourishing nature for how I want to present myself and how I want to create better platforms and better videos for you guys and gals so um, this is going to be a lot of a free realm thing and today i'm going to be by myself sort of just letting you guys and gals know who am i what do i do and there's something i wanted to go over today today i'm going to be discussing um some of my greatest influences in life you know three specific individuals uh desmond mofa etika the satoru iwata from nintendo formerly you know um deceased and then Reggie fils who was the former CEO of Nintendo of America. But before we get into that, um, thank you all for tuning into the X-Axis podcast. I hope you all are enjoying this. And let me know what I can do to improve upon this podcast down below. Um, but without further ado, let's get into it. So my name is Jordan Taylor. Um, JTX, as a lot of people refer me to on YouTube. Um... I'm 18 and I am an early graduate of high school, so I've already graduated and everything. And I I currently work and I make YouTube videos and I I try my best to push my content, you know. Um, I'm really, and and this is where it's big, you know. Again, I hope you guys and gals have been having a good one. Um, Remember to stay safe, you know. We have a pandemic still going on and while my city is reopening things, it's, it's important to keep an eye out to what could happen you know the everything is still going bad and i just want you all to be prepared you know i've been taking my quarantine time i got quarantined for uh, seven weeks due to my job shutting down for a, a little bit of time I had to cut back on staff but thankfully i'm working again and during those seven weeks i've really been taking a lot of time out of my day to really just sit back and rethink about about a lot of things on life you know I, in my opinion right now, at the point of age I am at, I'm in a very confused state. Um, as soon as I graduated, as soon as I walked off that, that graduation platform, I opened the door and I have a new aspect on life, you know. I don't exactly know where to go anymore, for real, you know. It's so weird having so many choices of what you could do in the world, but when I sit there and think about it, I think about myself trapped in a white room with a bunch of question marks and arrows pointing in a hundred different directions. And it's scary because I don't want to choose a career that might not benefit me. And that's something that I've been thinking about and been dwelling on. And it's sort of just given me a time to just sit back and think about it. You know, I've been thinking about changing up my job occupation recently. I love my job how it is. Um, I really do. But I can't keep making pizzas forever, you know, I need to I need to change it up and consumer electronics has always been my big thing I've been a passionate video gamer. You all have seen it on my channel my Twitter Everything, you know throughout my whole life ever since I picked up the Atari Jaguar and started playing it as a kid I've been hooked on games and that has never left me and I'm grateful for it Gaming has brought me a lot of things in life. It brought me to high school where I was able to play in esports uh, for competitive my competitive high school team and we were able to win a lot of matches and take championships for that and it's really given me an outlook on life and I, I don't know sometimes I worry about it I really do ponder I really do think about 
if it's possible for me to to make a career out of YouTube and to make a career out of video gaming. And I wonder if there's anyone out there that also thinks this as well. I wonder if there's anyone who's caught in the same boat as me, where who's gotten all the credentials for graduating high school, but they don't know. So a lot of people are looking at me and they're telling me to go to college. And I mean, college is a great choice, but I mean, I, I just fear that college may not work. You know, what I've been hearing left and right is that college is sometimes hit or miss. I've been hearing that companies hire people without college degrees because they have more experience. And, you know, I'm sort of hoping to branch out and make my experience known that I make YouTube videos that I'm consistent, that I am a very big game lover. That's something that I really, really want to do. And I feel like it's better for me to do it that way too. It just, it seems like more of a grind, but you know, it's a, it's a very big, scary way. And I've been thinking about it to segment into what I was talking about earlier. Whenever it comes to times like these, where I get confused, where I don't exactly know where to go in life. And I'm sitting in my bed with a headache pondering. I like to think back on some of the great examples that I've learned about in my life. And to, to start off, you know, I want to talk about Satoru Iwata. If you guys and gals did not know, Satoru Iwata was the former uh, global president of Nintendo. He was the one that helped it all. He was the game designer. He was literally the everything. And I have deep respect for Iwata. You know, rest his soul. He was a magnificent individual. And you could tell that, you know, everybody loves Satoru Iwata. And... I'm sad that it took his death to help me realize how much of a guy he was. You know, I knew about Satoru Iwata when he was alive, but when I was around, I wasn't really focused on the, the corporate presidents. I was more focused on playing the video games. Satoru Iwata was really a magnificent individual. You know, he started off in high school, uh, no, actually in college programming things on his calculators making games and his passion for video gaming was so strong that he would make games on calculators like small calculators and he would program these games in there like in football type of games into a calculator imagine that from like a long time ago you know it's just it's absolutely insane to see that his passion actually pushed through and that's that's something that i like to think about when i when i hear iwata when i hear his name you know, I have a couple of quotes here, actually. Let me pull it up. The one quote that always sticks to me when I hear Satoru Iwata, and especially when he talks about this, he's like, on my business card, I'm a corporate president. In my mind, I'm a game developer, but in my heart, I'm a gamer. And that, that I don't know, it, it seems like such a simple and quick thing to say, but that truly was what Satoru Iwata was. And... It let me think, he let me think a, long, a lot. Like I was sitting there thinking like if Satoru Iwata can, can push his efforts, if he can go out and he can make his own company and form it with, with all of his little buddies at Howl Laboratory, and if he can push and make it well known that his passion is video gaming, and he can get to that extent and succeed to be that high on a pedestal like that to be the global president of Nintendo Japan, I feel like I could have a good shot at that too. It's just, I'm, I'm worried still, you know? Um, I, and the thing about this is I have another quote here from Satoru Iwata here, and he said, we do not run from risk, we run to it. We are taking the risk to move beyond the boundaries of the game industry and to reach new players and current players. And I think this could apply, especially the first half could apply to life as well, you know? I think I just need to let loose and I need to allow myself to open up to risk. But I also need to understand opportunity and I need to always just make sure that there's a backup. You know, I want to run straight like head first into gaming. That's always been the thing I've wanted to do. I feel like I'm going to live and die doing gaming. It's just something that I, I I'm passionate about. You know, if you look on my Twitter every day, you, you can't go past my Twitter without seeing something about a video game. And I think. Listening to Satoru Iwata's speeches, you know, I downloaded a lot of his old speeches. I watched them at his keynote preferences and all of that. It's just helped me truly realize why I'm passionate about gaming. And it's given me a boost to if I could exactly get to where I want. You know, it's, it's really given me a lot of passion and a lot of push and a lot of hope for my future. 
that's sort of why I keep doing it. I keep uploading videos, I keep making content, I keep playing video games at a high level like I usually do. I'm very passionate about it, especially when it comes to Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony. I'm like, I love video games. If I could sit down and play video games all day and make reviews for them, I feel like I would be genuinely satisfied for that. You know, if I could make a profit off of that, if I could live off of it, I think that would be absolutely amazing. And that's the goal that I want to set up for the for, for the rest of my future. You know, I want this to be what the next five years look like, you know, and that that's something I think about Satoru Iwata. I think he's a great example there. I think he's an absolutely amazing guy. And that's that's why I just I, th I felt like I needed a segment into him specifically. You know, I said a lot about Desmond Amofa Etika. Again, bless his heart. Rest in peace. I feel like he left this a little too soon. You know, I think about Etika a lot. And while I didn't know Etika on a personal level, I talked to him a lot. You know, I talked to him on Twitter through DMs. I talked to him, you know, just general interactions on Twitter. And he seemed like an amazing guy. And when you dig through his story, when you look at his old Facebook messages, when you really listen to how he talks and how he goes on and on and on about his life, you really get to see that Etika didn't come from the silver platter in life. You know, he didn't come from the, the top dog, you know, type of place. He was the type of guy that lived in soup kitchens, pushing to make an effort out of his work. And I think Etika showed me what true perseverance and grinding was as a kid uh i myself you know i have had times where it's gotten rough i remember living in a trailer park with my mom we would have to worry about the lights coming off and on you know i would have that constant fear in my head i never forget that sleeping on cold winter nights with no lights complete darkness you know with nothing but a cover and a mom near me to help me stay you know warm at night and you know, it was just, I remember it as a kid saying that I don't have nothing now, so I'll never have anything in the future. And I feel like throughout my path, when, when I discovered Desmond's content and I started watching it a lot more and I got to hear more of his story, that it really just helped me understand that if Etika can go from eating out of soup kitchens and, you know, being flat broke to being such a gas giant that he was with the amount of amazing community that he had, you know, he was the embodiment of hype for Nintendo. And a lot of, I mean, like, I'm not going to, like, dish out any other YouTubers, but when we looked at Nintendo, Etika was usually the second person we looked at besides the Nintendo itself, like the employees itself. And that just gave me a lot of hope. You know, I like to think back on Etika. I like to use a lot of the things that he said. I like to think about that because he didn't come from a perfect place. In reality, when we look at different worlds, when we look at different people, we see that they all come from like Beverly Hills and, you know, and like Etika, he came from, I think he came from the Bronx or Manhattan in New York. He didn't come from the shiniest place. He didn't come from the best place, you know, and he still was able to make that grind. And that's what's sticking in my head, you know, certain things like that, that I like to go back and think about to keep me moving. You know, these are my personal motivators. These are my personal people that I like to think about. No, so Etika, in my life, he was the biggest push for me. He was the biggest push for a lot of people. He was an inspiration. Whether you didn't like his, you know, his negative tone or not, he was still an inspiration to a lot of people. And then, you know, it's just, he's, he's the first guy I've ever donated money to. You know, I never sent donations to anybody else, but that was the first guy that I felt like I needed to send money to, that I needed to support. Because what he was doing was absolutely amazing. And I want to not copy that energy, but I want to contain the thought and the energy in my mind for that and sort of push it to a new plateau and use some of that, that energy that he had and focus it on into my own formula. You know, I think that's something that I think everybody should do for real. I really think that. And then to segment into um, the final person that I wanted to talk about which is still with us today, God bless his soul as well, is Reggie fils -Aimé. Now, if you guys and gals did not know, Reggie fils retired, and I believe it's been so long now. It's been 2018, 2019. I think he retired in 2018, and he retired from Nintendo of America. He was the president of Nintendo of America, and everybody looked up to Reggie. This is actually one of the people that I knew about before he retired. 
um reggie made his appearances he was such a clean cool guy and i learned a lot of strengths from reggie about being a leader about learning business you know and while I'm, i don't consider myself a business guy at all i think leadership is an important thing that every individual should learn um reggie fils has taught me a lot he's taught me you know what to do with a business you know he shared stories from his own personal you know uh his own personal world his own personal accomplishments and, and his own work field you know and i've listened to him deeply i think reggie fils is the one guy that i was able to sit down and just focus on i love hearing about him i'm glad that he's going out and he's teaching at cornell schools and if i had the opportunity I would one time like sit down with Reggie. Like if I could get this podcast going, I would love to have Reggie fils as a part of it. I think that would be absolutely amazing. I would like to talk to him. I have a lot of questions right now because I know he can't answer some of my life questions, but I think I think it's it would be more interesting to know what life was like before he went to college. You know, was he working a normal job and whatnot? But Reggie, he taught me the business side of things. He taught me the the being a leader. You know, he was the leader for Nintendo of America, and he was able to garner so much support, so much love from his fans. It's clearly evident that he was an amazing leader when he did it. You know, hearing his stories about him going from like MTV to he did Bigfoot Pizza in New York. He was able to do that. It just shows that he was also one of those types of individuals that had to start off small. And he also said that opportunity was, you know, it wasn't exactly uh, what he thought. You know, he told, he said that you have to be risky. He said it just like Satoru Iwata said it. You have to be risky with how you're doing things. Risk is a natural part of life and you have to do it. And he did that with his job opportunities. You know, he went from NTV to, you know, to the Bigfoot pizza situation. He did a biking gig when he was doing marketing uh, for his his college. When he got out, he graduated. He did his college work like that. And he was able to go out and experience all these different things. And I think I need to take a piece of that notebook and do exactly what he was doing. You know, I need to branch out and I need to push to be the type of individual that pushes himself in different fields of work to see what goes on. Um, but that, that's really, that's all of that. That's really all of it. I know this podcast is a little bit short, but I, I sort of just wanted to wrap it up and talk to you guys and gals about that. Cause that's been something on my mind recently. Life is starting to get a little bit more stressful. And as I grow older, more responsibilities are starting to come into play. And the one thing that I'm focused on more now than ever is my future. I'm more worried about my future. I want my future to be the way that I picture it in my head. And I know that you can't always have everything that you want, but this is something that I need to have in life. I need to have gaming. I need to have YouTube. You know, I I want to make content. I want to be the type of guy like Lamar Wilson that takes a content, takes a, like a, a package. Let's say I get a package sent to me from Xbox. I want to be the guy that reviews it, opens it and has an amazing community right there with me and I want to lead that that push you know I want to support my favorite brands in consumer electronics and I want to I want to if even I could be a competitive esports player I would go for that I want gaming to be a big part of who I am in life and I think that that's what I really wanted to touch on here in this podcast today um this podcast was a little bit scatterbrained of course and with me just being the only guy here um for this first episode I know a lot of you are just like, what the hell am I listening to? But this is sort of just the thoughts that I've got going on my mind. And it it feels really good to release and let you guys and gals know what I'm thinking. I really do hope that some of you are out there and you understand what I'm going through. And if you do, definitely hit me up. You know, I want to discuss this. I'm feeling a very uncomfortable and a very confused state right now in life. But I think a lot of people my age definitely do that you know and i just want to i wonder if anybody else out there is feeling the exact same way i do i hope that this podcast blows up to be something amazing you know and even if it doesn't i still want to keep doing it i want to get my thoughts out there whether it's on video games whether it's on current events and i want to to push to 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 keep moving you know this is going to be like a slow burn type of thing i plan on having a bunch of youtubers come on 
a bunch of friends come on and, and talk, you know, we're just going to talk like normal. We're going to discuss our personal views on certain things, whether it's the Xbox console, whether it's like a, a, a new job and a business, you know, and I hope you guys and gals are there for me. I know one thing for sure. I love podcasts because they're one thing that I could turn on. You know, you don't have to worry about it being too, you know, you don't have to pay that much attention with your eyes. It's all audio related. And I think that's important. You know, I like to go to sleep to podcasts. I like to listen to them. They help me soothe my brain. And if this is helping you out as well, you know, that's that's absolutely amazing. And I'm glad to hear that. But that's going to be the first episode of the X Axis podcast. I really do hope that you guys and gals enjoyed this first podcast. And trust me, I will be having a lot of people come on. I'm going to strive to get Reggie fils on this podcast at some point of time, whether it's a year from now, whether it's two months from now, whether it's 10 years from now, I want to sit down and talk to the man himself and have a real one-on-one conversation with him because I think that would be absolutely amazing. But I would like to thank you all again for supporting me, for supporting my channel and everything I do. I know this is a different step that I'm taking, but I feel like this is a step in the right direction and uh, my heart feels good with this one. I'm confident on it. But thank you all for coming down to the X Axis podcast. I hope everyone has a good day, night, afternoon, or evening. Thank you all. Remember to stay safe out there. And peace out.